Hey guys. Yeah, this will be the first video that I'm uh, reading from the floor. But if you've been to Central Asia, there's a green tea drinking ceremony where everybody sits on the floor. There's always a rug. So I have a Turkmen rug. It's a beautiful rug from Turkmenistan. And you sit on the floor and you drink hot green tea. And whenever it gets warm, the, ho the host comes and pours like scalding hot. And the idea is to keep you as guests for as long as possible because it's so honorable to have guests. So I'm sitting on my Turkmen rug, and I'm going to read to you Zach's Lie, chapter 19, straight through. So here we go. Here's the number of our hotel, Zach's mother said. Are you sure you'll be all right? Yes, Mom. We'll be home early Sunday evening. Do you know when you'll be down from the mountains? Late, probably. Not too late, because you have school on Monday. I gotta go. Zach kissed his mother and was tempted to kiss his sister as well. He felt a lot closer to her than he had in a long time. He hadn't talked to her about Commander If, who would have to wait until she got back from Los Angeles. He gave her a big smile and said, don't let some Hollywood producer lure you away. Yeah, I won't say the name. <laughs> Not much chance. Zach wasn't so sure after hearing her performance. He got to Cataline's house just as she was stepping out of her front door. Zach, I understand you'll be staying with us at the Nevada tonight, Mrs. Cristobal said. I hope that's all right, Zach said. Of course it's all right. We enjoy your company. The school day started out well. Mr. Dugan was home with the flu. The substitute thought P.E. meant pretty easy. For the first time since Zach had started school, he walked into his homeroom sweat-free. This changed as soon as he took his seat, scrawled across the chalkboard in very big, clumsy letters was, if you take the V out of lives, what do you get? I don't think this is funny at all, Mrs. Miller said. It took me half an hour to get the red chalk off the board yesterday. I want to know who did this. Zach stared straight ahead unable to believe what he was seeing. His sister had not told a friend about Commander If. Someone had read about Commander If in his journal. Well, Mrs. Wheeler asked. No one answered. Fine, she stepped over to the intercom and called the principal. It took Mrs. Pyle less than a minute to get to the room. She looked at the scrawled sentence for a long time, then turned to the class. Someone in here knows something about this, Mrs. Pyle said, and looked from student to student, lingering a little longer. When she got to Zach, who was frantically trying to remember the last time he had seen his journal. The leather backpack was hanging on the doorknob of his bedroom door. This he knew, and he had seen it just that morning, and had almost slipped the pack over his shoulder on his way out, but decided he would pick it up after school instead. But was the journal in the backpack? When was the last time he had seen the journal? Today was the 13th of October, Friday the 13th. Johnny Depp, original movie. That's just about perfect, he thought bitterly. And he had made his last entry on Saturday while he was working in the building. He remembered that he was getting to the end of the journal and had decided to cut back on the entries until he found a replacement for it. Zack? If he had lost the journal or someone had stolen it, Zachary? His mother would have to give up her bookstore. His sister would lose her part in The Opera Ghost. He would lose Catalin. It seemed impossible that he had been the one who had slipped. Zachary Granger! A hand slammed down on his desk. The classroom came back into focus. Mrs. Pyle had somehow materialized in front of his desk and was looking down at him with a horrible scowl. She pointed at the board. What do you know about this, Zack? Nothing, he said quietly. What? I said, I don't know anything about it. What time did you arrive at school today? Just before the bell. I didn't do this. 
Catalin came to his defense. He's right, Mrs. Pyle. Zach and I walked to school together this morning. We got here just before the bell rang. Mrs. Pyle stared at Zach. What did you do? What did you do yesterday after school? I was with Daryl. Mrs. Pyle looked over at Daryl. And what did you do after school? Uh, we played video games at my house, Daryl said with a perfectly straight face. I annihilated him. Several kids laughed, and it occurred to Zach that Daryl was much better suited for the witness security program than he was. Mrs. Pyle addressed the entire class. If it happens again, you will all stay after school and scrub every chalkboard in this building. Before she left the room, she shot Zach another scowl. Scrubbing chalkboards was the least of Zach's problems. He had to get home and find out if his journal was still in the backpack. But he would have to wait until lunch. He couldn't leave early without getting a pass from the office, which would mean another encounter with Mrs. Pyle. He glanced at the clock every three minutes, thinking that at least half an hour had passed. When the bell finally rang, it was all he could do not to sprint out of the room at a dead run. He followed the others through the door. Cataline was waiting for him in the hallway. Why do you think Mrs. Pyle thought you wrote on the board? I don't know, Zach said. Are you okay? You look kind of strange when Mrs. Pyle was talking to you. Uh, I just zoned out for a second or two. And Daryl walked up to them. You two headed to lunch? I've got to run home for a second, Zach answered. Why? Cataline asked. Uh, I left my homework. Aren't you going to eat? Uh, I'll get something at home, Zach said, backing his way down the hallway. I'll see you after lunch. As soon as he got out of sight of the school, he ran all the way home. He found his backpack hanging on the closet doorknob. He dumped the contents on the bed. Commander If, pencils, erasers, two books he was reading, no journal. He sat on the edge of the bed and covered his face with his hands. He thought of his laundry hamper and jumped up. It wouldn't be the first time he had hidden the journal in there. He turned it over and shook it out. Socks, underwear, shirts, pants. No journal. Zack cursed. The only other place it might be was in the jack-in-the-box. There was a chance he might have put it there and forgotten he had done it. He pulled the box down from the closet shelf without much hope, and he put it on the bed. Five journals, Zack said out loud. That's all I ask. If there are five in the box, I promise I will never slip up again. In fact, I'll burn them and forget Jack Osborne ever existed. Zack pulled the chain with the Jack in the Box key over his head. He opened the padlock, closed his eyes, lifted the lid, then turned the box upside down. He opened his eyes. There were five journals lying on the bed, but one of them wasn't his. The fifth journal was scuffed and battered and had a rubber band around it to hold the pages in. He took the rubber band off and opened the cover. Paper clipped to the first page was a note from his father. Jacko, I'm sorry I had to use your box. I didn't know where else to put this thing. I'm also sorry you found this before I was ready. Whatever you do, don't read this journal. The information in it could, the information it contains will just get you into trouble. Above all else, keep the journal safe. I'll get in touch with you when I need it. Love, Dad. Zach reread the note three times. The binding on the journal had come apart, and all the pages pages inside were loose. On the first page was a sketch of a man's face. Beneath the sketch was a name, Alonzo Aznar. Under the name were Alonzo Aznar's vital statistics, age, height, weight, hair color, eye color, and various addresses. Despite his father's warning, Zach flipped through a few more pages. On them were more sketches, locations of remote landing strips, addresses, rows of accounting information, all in his father's neat handwriting. Zack slipped the rubber band back around the journal. He looked at the other journals lying on the bed. There was no point in burning them now. 
Number five was gone. Someone knew who they were. It was only a matter of time before the Grangers became someone else. What rhymes with Zack? he asked. Mac, Commander If said. Zack called the number of the hotel his mother had given him. I'm sorry, the receptionist said. We don't have anyone here by the name of Granger. They probably haven't checked in yet, Zack said. Well, I'd like to leave a message. Have them call Zack as soon as they can. He thought about hiding his father's journal, but he was afraid someone might find it. He decided to keep it with him until he can get it to his father. Getting into some heavy, rocky waters. It's only for those who know how to swim.